Hello everyone, welcome to another HTML tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at HTML tables. We'll cover when to use tables, when not to use tables, the code used to mark up your tables, and finally, we'll also learn how to add a bit of styling to your tables. So let's dive right in. Let's begin with a visual example. On the right side of your screen is the groceries table that I've created for this lesson. So this table contains four points of data for each item. For example, uh, our first item, its name is milk, its price is $3, we only want one of them, and it's on aisle A3 in the grocery store. Four pieces of data for this one item. We are using a table to mark up this data in our HTML because this is tabular data. So the question becomes, what is tabular data? Well, let's imagine we had a simpler grocery list where we were literally only listing the item name and that was it. We didn't care about the price or the quantity or the aisle number. So let's go ahead and create that in our markup. Uh, we begin with an unordered list and then inside that we'll have list items. So milk, whoops, milk, uh, bread, apples. Okay, so let's refresh. There's our list. Now it's important to note that since all we're doing is including the item name, that's just one piece of data for each item, we do not use a table. We use simply an unordered list because that's what it is. It's a list, not a table. This is a table because we have multiple points of data for each item. Now that we've drawn a distinction between lists and tables, we're almost ready to begin learning how to code tables. But there's one final thing I want to bring up. Please only use tables when you have tabular data. And what I mean by this is, don't use tables simply to create columns. So if you're new to HTML, you might be looking at this and thinking, oh wow, I've been wanting to create a website with two columns, a main column for content and a sidebar for links. Don't do that. Do not use tables in that fashion. Uh, that's known as using tables for layout. It's something you really want to avoid. Uh, like I said earlier, please only use tables for tabular data. Okay, let's get into the fun stuff. Let's learn how to actually code tables. So first, let's delete this sample unordered list that we created just as an example. Okay, and as always, uh, let's delete the styles that I created before starting this video. So there the table is without any styling. And we're actually going to delete uh, all of the code for the tables. Uh, so I can write it in front of you so you can learn how to do it yourself. Okay, so here we go. We have a clean canvas. So let's imagine our goal is to create the groceries table that we just saw. We'll begin with the table element. So, oops, so there's our start tag. Here's our ending tag, table. Inside the table are table rows. So TR stands for table row. Okay, this is where things get a little bit trickier. Inside each table row are the cells. And since this is our first table row, this will actually be our header. So this is where we include the labels for each column. So for example, TH, table header, item name, then close the table header, okay? The next column will be price. So TH for table header, then price. And then we close it. Uh, the next column is quantity. So TH quantity, close it. And the final row is aisle number. So TH aisle number, close it. Okay, so let's save this and refresh in our browser. Uh, we can see there's no styling yet and there's no content. So it's hard to see, but we do have four columns, item name, price, quantity, and aisle number. Great. Now that we have our labels, our headers out of the way, let's go ahead and add our first actual grocery item. So in our markup, we're going to create a new row. So we start a table row and we end the table row. Okay, now instead of table headers inside the row, like we used above, we're now going to use TD, which stands for table data, right? So our first one will be milk, 
Uh, the next, uh, and these correspond with each other. So the first one here is item name. The first one here is milk. The second one here is price. So this will be $3. Okay, next up is quantity. So we will create a TD for tabular data. And we only want one. And finally, it is on aisle A3. Okay, so if we refresh, our table is starting to take shape. Item name, milk, price $3, quantity one, aisle number A3. Okay, so I'm just gonna speed through uh, the other items because you do not need to sit here and watch me type these over and over again. Okay, so I sped through and typed out all of the items. Uh, you can see we now have our four items and each item corresponds with each table row. So this is the milk row, this is the whole wheat bread row, this is the carrot row, and this is the apples row. Okay, and they each have their four points of data. Item name, price, quantity, and item and aisle number. Okay, so that's about it as far as the markup goes. Uh, now, let's learn how to add a bit of styling because this table isn't very visually pleasing. Okay, so let's hop over to our style sheet. Let's begin by uh, having the labels for each row sit to the left instead of being center aligned. So table, then we want to select the table header element. Text align left. If we refresh, okay, great. Next up, let's add a border to each uh, table cell. Table, TD, border, one pixel, solid, Let's go with light gray. Okay, let's also give a bit of padding to each table cell. So padding, uh, four pixels vertical and eight pixels horizontal. Okay, good, things are starting to take shape. Let's go ahead and focus on our table headers again. Let's give these uh, a different background color. So for this rule, background color, uh, we'll go with a nice blue. Okay, and we'll actually make the color of the text white. So if we refresh, we see that that is in place. Let's also give the table headers themselves padding. So let's go with four pixels top. Uh, let's give them quite a bit of padding on the right. Uh, four pixels on the bottom and eight on the left. So if we refresh, we see that that's working. Okay, great. Let's now try to remove the little bit of spacing between each border. If you look really closely, you can see there's a bit of spacing uh, between each cell. So to do that, we're actually going to target the table itself, table, and say border collapse, collapse. So if we refresh, we see that the spacing is gone. Okay, one last thing, let's imagine that we wanted to uh, color each alternate row a different color so the human eye can easily track a row across. So for example, if we wanted whole wheat bread and apples to have a different background color. Now this will work in all relatively new browsers and it will work um, on every iPhone and Android smartphone device. Uh, this will not work in older versions of Internet Explorer. Um, in the future, I can show you ways to get it to work there as well. But for now, you can type in table, and we want to select every other table row. So nth child odd TD. So what this selector is basically saying is drill into the table, then every other table row, then go into the TD element. And then we're going to say background color E7 EDF0. Okay, so if we refresh, we see that every other row now has a background color. So our table now has a bit of basic styling. It's easy for the human eye to look at it and immediately tell uh, which pieces of data go together. And that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you feel like you learned something and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks. Bye.